Uh, here's Gary. He's calling us from Anderstown. Hello to you, Gary. How are you doing, Stephen? Go ahead. You can talk to Nick Griffin if you like. Hi, well, sir. Uh, Stephen, mm. just regarding that guy that's on, I don't even want to mention his name. He's a disgrace. Because he's, the he's, young, the he's young, an MEP. The young guy, he's what? He's an MEP. Did he fight for the British Army? Young Andy came on there and he did what he thought he had to do and he fought for his country. And the wee lad suffered for it and God bless him for doing it. He's British and good luck to him. I'm an Irish Republican. But Mr. Clegg or whatever you call him. Griffin. Griffin. <laughs> He's so interesting that you forget his name. Did you ever fight for the army yourself, sir? Oh, I've not been in the army, no. Well, sure, you're a total British man and you never supported your own country at war. Okay, Gary, thank you. Now, can I just, can I just get a, a, a sense tonight? Because you, 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 your, your comments might have attracted, I don't know, uh, if what your tweet would have received or, or, or not. But I want to get a sense tonight about how much you actually care about Northern Ireland. So I went up into a, a, a band hall uh, last week from the Protestant community and I met some young people who were unemployed and had been unemployed for a couple of years. So let's just drill down into what you actually stand for. How would you help Northern Ireland in terms of employment, for example? Because I've read your manifesto. Yep. Well, our economic policies would help Northern Ireland as much as anywhere else in the United Kingdom, because by keeping out mon foreign manufactured goods, by stopping bailing out the banks and instead of reinvesting in British industry, we would produce an awful lot of jobs in Britain, including Northern Ireland. So what Nobody else is going to do that. What they, all say, they all say that Britain has to, has to compete with China, which means everyone in the end is going to lose their jobs if they're in, in manufacturing. So what you've actually said in your manifesto for Northern Ireland is that one of your big ideas for creating employment here uh, would be weaving. <laughs> No, the, that's the yes. local manifesto yes. and that was talking about, uh, yeah, and it was about, it was talking about encouraging to an extent a return to crafts as a way of providing jobs, but overall you've got to see it in the overall context yeah. of a manifesto for the whole of the United, United Kingdom. No, no, this was your... We're talking about not bailing out the banks sure, but to Mr. the tune of billions Mr. of pounds Mr. Griffin, and investing that money in Britain. Yeah, but we're in Northern Ireland and you came to Northern Ireland. I know you only spent yep. five days here yes. uh, within the last 12 months, but let's actually see what your big ideas are. Um, weaving, uh, this is to create employment. How many young people, by the way, between 18 yep. and 24 in Northern Ireland, Nick, are unemployed? Percentage. Far too many. How many? I don't know the percentage. How many are unemployed in the Northwest? You don't know that? I don't know Northern Ireland. No. But you're the one who If I'm a Conservative here. MP or a, so, or a so Labour one, MP, one I've got a research department one, one funded second. with billion, millions of pounds of taxpayers' uh, money. You came I here. I haven't got that. You came here. You say you want to build a political movement mm -hmm. here. You're the leader of the BNP. Now, let's see the whites of your eyes right now, Nick Griffin, when I ask you, have you got a clue? a clue about anything that matters to us here in Northern Ireland, whether we're Catholic, yes, Protestant or Muslim. Have. So let yep. me repeat the question, sir. Our 18 to 24 year olds, you're a political leader. What is the percentage of mm -hmm. 18 to 24 year olds unemployed? I don't know, and David Cameron wouldn't know either, and you wouldn't ask him that because you're the, B the biased BBC. It's typical of the way you work. Talk it's about the issues that I know bother people in Northern the, Ireland. The it's immigration bothers people hugely, and it's the relentless attack on the loyalist working class by sectarian Fenian bigots bothers them a huge amount as well. It's, uh, it's the loyalist working class as well as other working classes that I'm talking about. Just, I'll maybe tweet this to you later. Uh, the, the, the answer is 24%. Uh, of 18 to 24 year olds, Nick, um, are, well, shocking. shocking. It's a pity you didn't know it before you came. Yeah. Um, but, but of course, another no, one I of know, your... I know it's too high and that my party is the only ones with an answer. And, uh, well, one of your other answers in your manifesto is you would build stone walls to create employment <laughs> in Northern Ireland. Yeah. Both those things are talking about a minor aspect of creating some jobs and preserving local cultures and local identi identities and local landscapes. This is the your only way to get a large, serious number of jobs back is, for instance, to bring back shipbuilding. The only way we'll do that is with a government that puts British industry first and stops bailing out the banks and invests billions of pounds yeah. in rebuilding British industry. And Nick, that we would do. Nick, let me send you a message from me. You see, when you come to Northern Ireland, I'm going to ask you questions about Northern Ireland. That's what I'm going to do. 
all right? Might be uncomfortable. You say you're yep. building a political uh, position here. I'm going to establish what you know about Northern Ireland. That might be a shock. Now, yeah. you also say in your Northern Ireland manifesto, as a matter of principle, we oppose the recruitment of foreign staff in the health service. It's a matter of principle. Yes. Why? Yeah, this, this principle, because leaders, many, many leaders in southern, in Africa in particular, including Nelson Mandela, have literally begged the British government to stop recruiting, stealing nurses and doctors, because when we steal their health service workers, kids in those countries die, and we should be recruiting and training and paying a decent wage to our own unemployed youngsters to become nurses, to become doctors, instead of stealing from the third world. I think that's a very good principle. Okay, and the BMP, you say, would remove 100,000 NHS bureaucrats UK wide. How many of those would be from Northern Ireland? That would be a pro rata percentage. It wouldn't be a huge number. What would the number would, be? It would be some, and that would free up. I don't know. Oh! I don't know, because as I told you before, I don't have <laughs> don't a research know, department funded with millions of pounds of taxpayers' money like all the you others do. do. Listen, I'll, I'll tweet you later on if we, if we work it out. The BMP would remove 100,000 NHS bureaucrats. If you care about Northern Ireland, yeah. if you come here, you don't know what the breakdown would be. You don't know what assembly seats no. you fought. Here's Ryan on the line. Hello, yeah. Ryan. Hi, uh, Jack. Uh, I, w I was going to come out with something educational, but to be honest with you, this boy needs a spot on Mrs. Brown Boys because he's absolutely hilarious. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, Absolute bloody diction. He, he actually met, no, you haven't even picked up oil on yourself, Stephen. He did say he doesn't represent Northern Ireland. There's it in a nutshell. So, my question to you, Nick, educated Mr. MEP, do you think in today's society, particularly here in the north of Ireland, where we have struggled and that there have been the history that people actually care about narrow minded, small, bigoted opinions like yourself? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak for the, on the behalf of the majority of people from Northern Ireland and I'm going to say no. People nowadays don't care where you come from, what religion you are, or what colour of green, white and orange, or, or red, white and blue you were. It's about where you are, where you come from, and about if you're going to be a half decent person. People are more concerned with mortgages, getting jobs, social security, investment in social okay. policy. All right. You're not, my friend. Thank you're you not. Thank you for your call. Do you consider yourself to be a fascist, Nick? <laughs> Absolutely not. No. Why not? Because fascism is about denying political opponents their right to free speech, which is what Sinn Féin, for instance, want to do to me. It's about using violence against political opponents, which is what the far left want to do to me. And it's about a close, incestuous relationship between government and big business All which right. screws ordinary people. That's what we had under the Labour Party. It's what we're getting, getting under the Tories. Okay. It's what I don't want to see. Well, listen, Nick, thank you very much uh, for coming on the programme tonight. We're going to continue the, the discussion on Twitter. And what I'll do straight after this programme is tweet you the seats that you fought, but you can't remember where they are. Thanks a lot. Give them a round of applause. That will be very useful. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Much. We'll see you soon. Night-night, everybody.